Germany's invasion of France and the Low Countries in May 1940 was one of the most spectacular and devastating campaigns in the history of land warfare. In just six weeks, Belgium and Holland were overrun, and France was forced to surrender. Poland, Norway, and Denmark had already been crushed. Hitler was now master over almost all of Northern Europe. But Britain still held out against him, largely because of a major blunder by Hitler. Before the end of May 1940, the Germans had trapped soldiers from the British Expeditionary Force in a pocket around the French port of Dunkirk. But Hitler did not send ground troops to destroy them. The reason was Hermann Goering. As head of the Luftwaffe, Goering was eager to claim the glory of defeating the British. He persuaded Hitler to allow his air force to destroy the Dunkirk pocket. But both men failed to appreciate that air power alone could not defeat armies. Offensive action by ground forces was also required. As a result, most of the British force escaped across the English Channel. Britain continued to resist Hitler, ultimately leading to the defeat of Nazi Germany. When Hitler invaded Poland on September 1, 1939, Britain and France, which had promised to assist the Poles, declared war on Germany. But the British could offer no support until their troops had been deployed in France. The French strategy was strictly defensive, based on the frontier fortifications of the Maginot Line. They were not ready to advance into Germany beyond the range of the Maginot guns. After five weeks of fighting, with no help from their allies, the Poles were forced to surrender. Because Britain and France had supported Poland, Hitler wanted to turn on them immediately. But his generals pleaded for more time to prepare. On paper, at least, both countries were more formidable than Poland. In spite of Hitler's impatience, Germany's invasion plans were delayed by the onset of winter. There were also fears that Germany's plans may have been leaked after a plane carrying a Luftwaffe officer crash-landed in Belgium. The Germans needed time to develop a new plan. This period of waiting became known as the Phony War. It allowed the Allies, especially Britain, to strengthen defenses in France. The British Expeditionary Force increased its four divisions to 13 by the end of April 1940. But Germany also took advantage of the stalemate by increasing its forces and developing a new plan to quickly defeat the Allies by splitting their forces. Army Group C would cover the Maginot Line defenses. And Army Group B would overrun Holland and most of Belgium. Army Group A, equipped with the bulk of the German heavy armor, would push through France's heavily wooded Ardennes. Then they would race to the English Channel, cutting off the northern Allied forces. Hermann Goering's Luftwaffe would merely help ground forces destroy Allied air power and attack their communications. Northern France had no natural defenses, so the Allies decided to move their northern armies composed of the best French formations and the British Expeditionary Force into Belgium as soon as the Germans attacked. The Allied forces would move to the River Dial. They didn't realize that this would help the Germans cut them off. But the German attack in the West was delayed. Hitler was concerned that the Allies were about to land in neutral Norway. So in early April, German forces launched an invasion there. France and Britain sent forces to Norway too, but they could not prevent the Germans from overrunning the country. On May 10, 1940, Germany's long-awaited invasion of France and the Low Countries began. 
the Northern Allied forces immediately crossed the border into Belgium. The Allies were confident that they could stop the German juggernaut. But they were about to be taken by surprise and forced to retreat. In May of 1940, a German invasion swept through much of Holland in just five days. In central Belgium, the Germans wasted no time in crossing the canals guarding the eastern border. German glider troops quickly overran the modern frontier fortress of Eben Emaal. The Belgians thought it was an impregnable key to their defenses. The Belgian forces were driven westward toward the British and French defenses on the Dial River line. But the Germans made their most spectacular advance in the Ardennes. The Allies did not think the Germans would seriously contemplate a major thrust through the densely wooded hills of Ardennes. So they deployed only light screening forces, which the German panzers quickly brushed aside. In less than three days, the Germans reached the primary French defenses on the River Meuse. They bombarded the French defenses. German Stuka dive bombers joined in. German troops then crossed the River Meuse in several places. They quickly established bridgeheads on the far bank. Bridges were built so the panzers could cross. They quickly broke out and thrust westward. Just as the Germans had planned, the Allied forces were soon split. Aware that they were about to be cut off, the Allied forces in Belgium began to move back toward the French border. The German panzers rapidly advanced toward the English Channel. On May 20th, 1940, German regiments reached the Channel at the mouth of the River Somme. The Northern Allied forces were completely cut off from the rest of France. The Panzers now turned north to the French ports of Boulogne and Calais. On May 25th, Boulogne fell to the Germans. Calais, held by French troops and a hastily gathered force from Britain, surrendered two days later. In the north, the German Army Group B continued to pressure the withdrawing Allied forces, now surrounded on three sides. The Allies became trapped in a pocket centered on the port of Dunkirk.
On May 25th, Belgians who were fighting on the left of the British warned that they could not fight for much longer under the unrelenting German pressure. Commander of the British forces, Lord Gort, was tightly hemmed in by the Germans. He realized that if the Belgians surrendered, his left flank would be exposed and his expeditionary force would be destroyed. He now decided to save his army. He asked London to organize an evacuation by sea back to Britain. On the German side, Gerd von Rundstedt, the commander of Army Group A, had already decided to temporarily halt his panzers outside Dunkirk. After a two-week rampage across northern France, their crews were exhausted. Vehicles and equipment needed to be repaired, and their supply lines were overextended. Hermann Goering was conscious of the relatively minor contribution his Luftwaffe had made so far. He saw von Rundstedt's pause as his perfect opportunity. Goering believed that his Luftwaffe could claim a spectacular victory by bombing the Allied pocket at Dunkirk. He asked Hitler to give them the chance. On May 25th, Hitler decided to stop von Rundstedt's panzers and assign the destruction of the Allied forces at Dunkirk to Goering's Luftwaffe. This proved to be a grave blunder, one that Hitler would have every reason to regret throughout the war. Hermann Goering wasted no time and ordered his Luftwaffe to attack the Allies trapped in the Dunkirk pocket. The German infantry and artillery maintained pressure on the ground. On May 26, 1940, the day after the British forces asked for help, the man in charge of the British naval base at Dover, Admiral Bertram Ramsey, began evacuating the British expeditionary force from Dunkirk. The mission was codenamed Operation Dynamo, but expectations were that it would probably rescue no more than a small proportion of the trapped troops. On May 27th, Belgium's King Leopold surrendered to Germany to prevent any more suffering in his country. This increased the pressure on the beleaguered British at Dunkirk and on Operation Dynamo. As the Luftwaffe began attacking rescue ships crossing the channel, Goering told Hitler, only fishing boats are coming across. I hope the Tommies can swim well. The Luftwaffe sank a number of ships. The Dunkirk pocket was closing. But despite pressure from the Germans, over 26,000 British troops were evacuated by May 29th. And during the next 24 hours, more than 47,000 were rescued. 54,000 more were evacuated on the 30th. Even so, Hitler was satisfied he had totally defeated the Allied forces in the north. He now turned his attention to conquering the remainder of France and was planning a new thrust south across the rivers Somme and Aisne. Yet the evacuation of Dunkirk continued. Now, paddle steamers and pleasure boats were being pressed into service. These became known as the Little Ships of Dunkirk. They played an important role in the rescue mission. Not just British, but now French and Belgian troops were being evacuated from the beaches. One reason for that success was that Royal Air Force fighters had begun engaging the Luftwaffe over the beaches. 